Good morning. I was so cold when I got into the States. I never thought it was going to be that cold. Hello. Okay. Um, been a while, you know, uh, living in the cold weather when I was going to school here in Conway. And uh, left to go home, and it is hot over there. But you know what? When it gets to 70, 75, we are cold. <laughs> yeah, you see people putting on jackets and coats and sweaters and all that. But I tell them, you don't know what is cold. I, I try to show them how cold it is. I said, put your hand in deep freezer, you know, for at least five minutes and feel how your hands will be. That is how it is outside in America. <laughs> But I'm glad that this church uh, has been there for me and my ministry, my family, and I really appreciate all that you've done for me in the work in Africa. My name is Kwame, but Gary said he wasn't going to try to call or pronounce the last name. I forgive him. <laughs> but uh, Miss Felder and Mr. Felder know how to pronounce that, so I will let them you know, to teach him. <laughs> it's Kwame Boahen. B-O-A-H-E-N-E. -E, like Boahen. Okay? Like a hen. Something like that. So you can. Well, um, like I said, I want to say thank you. Because if it wasn't your church, I wouldn't even be standing here today. You bought my ticket for me. Amen? And I really appreciate that a lot that I could come and visit with you and also to see my son. And Derek, Derek was born in the States when I was going to school here. And uh, so, you know, it qualifies him to be American citizen. And uh, when I came to the States in my 99, it was so difficult for me to understand English, you know, getting on computer to do other things, it was so tough. So my freshman year was really, really, really tough. Miss Fielder knows what I'm saying. I didn't know what was called parenthesis, okay? And because in my home, we say brackets. That is a British word, brackets. So Miss Fielder will be teaching, and she'll be reading, you know, two into parenthesis, two plus this times this parenthesis, and uh, what is going on? Then at the end of the thing, I was called zero because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what is called parenthesis. And so I go back to her and say, what did you mean by this? And he said, and then he would draw it on it. I said, oh, we call it brackets. You know, that's what the British say, into brackets, two into brackets, two plus so and so, bracket close, and you know. So it was hard on me. And so I realized that since this boy is here and, um, He's an American citizen, and one day he will want to come because I know that is his desire because my two other kids were born in Ghana, and when they are fighting, you know, Derek said, I'm American, you know. Yeah, I'll go to America one day, and so we decided to let him come to the States to go to school and to learn and know the culture and all the things that he will have to know. So a friend of mine accepted to, you know, let him stay with him to go to school in Bordenham, and uh, unfortunately, my friend has said he is moving to Houston, and he cannot take him along. And so it has become a very tough decision right now. He wants me to pick him on the 20th of this month. And uh, I'm thinking what to do now, just praying that God will direct me. If I have to take him home with me, we got to go home. And if we have to have somebody who God will lead to let him stay with him, we praise the Lord. Whichever way. So you pray with me also in this tough decision that I have to do. So I'm going to be in the States because of him for maybe a month to make sure everything is settled before I leave or go back home with him. So I appreciate what you have done for me and my family in Africa as a whole. I brought some uh, slideshow, which... I mean, I'm not very good and things like that, but uh, Brother Dustin is helping me to put it together. And that's me, you can tell. I work for Life Word Ministries, 
which we do radio, um, putting the gospel in radio to reach people out there who have never heard the gospel, or places that we cannot go physically because there are several Muslim territories around where I live, and you can't go, you know, physically to stand and proclaim the gospel, but the radio is able to go, so that's where I work for. Okay, that is my family, uh, me and my wife Gifty and Derek and the little one in the dark that caused trouble in the house and, and that's my oldest girl, yeah, so that's us, mm -hmm. the same, mm -hmm. can go. I don't know if you will see Clary, this is my dad, his name is Adu, A-D-U. He is the head guy of our ministry. He's been doing this ever since I was born. So he is the director for our mission work, and we support him doing what the Lord has asked us to do. Yeah, that's my two girls. They wear uniforms to school over there. And this is business area or, you know, I don't know if you know what is called plantain. They sell some in Walmart sometimes. You know, and then cassava is it mostly the food we eat in Ghana. So you see the road and the crowdy and all that, yeah. And this is Water for Christ. I don't know if you might have heard it. Tim Tyler, he lives in town, and he is the one leading the Water for Christ team, they come to Ghana and drill a borehole for deprived areas where there is no good water that people can, you know, drink. So they come in and then we set up where to go, where we think it is needed to get the people water. And then we use that as an advantage to, you know, present the gospel to the people. If we can bring you water, we bring you Christ as well. So that is also helping us to plant new churches. This is one of the church that we have over there. It takes about, mm, average, there are about 70 people in that building. Mm -hmm. There's a clear view of the church, of the building. And the same place where we are draining water. This man is also, uh, used to be a preacher, or oh, he's now not, but... Uh, Brother Rodney, maybe some of you might know him, uh, he came and we staged a crusade. Right after we've drained the water, we staged a crusade outside and just give the gospel to the people. That's Tim Tyler right there and doing the machine there. We give t-shirts from here. When you know, they ship a container with clothes and things like that, we give it to the people that are really in need of clothes so they can have something to share and, and then come to Christ also. They are happy. This is the bicycles, when we buy them, we haul them in a container and then as our preachers comes, we give it to them so they're able to take it to their various villages. There's plenty of them. We put a basket in front so they can put their Bible or any little thing they might carry with them. That is them. So that was the money you gave me the last time. That's the results. Okay. And there's one of the, the churches also in one of our villages. And the women, they they have what you call W uh, M A or what you know. Ours is women fellowship. So they, they wanted one T shirt to wear. And this is a pet uh, for people that are unable to walk, but their upper you know, body can help them to roll this. So I got some of this and gave it to some folks. You will see them as it grows. Yeah, there's a lady who had never walked. 
and she is one of our church members. And the building behind them is where they meet. So I went there and presented one of these to her. And now she can go anywhere by herself. Before, somebody has to help, but now she's able to move around. That is her family. I know you might know who this guy is. This is Kwame, standing right there. <laughs> and we also give motorbikes to places that are really in need of. We buy one motorbike for $900. And then we buy the bicycle for $85 a piece. So that is what we need. One of our needs are the motorbike and the bicycle, 900 and then $85 a bicycle. And these are some of the kids that I try to help in my ministry. So I presented one of these pets to her. And now she's able to use this arm to roll. And you can tell this girl, the legs is not working. You can't stand on anything. So he's, yeah. Now she can roll and go anywhere she wants to go. gave about seven of those to the people and they really enjoyed it, put a smile on their face. And this lady, she has never walked. She walked with her knee and uh, it was horrible to see her, even when she's dressed neatly, she will be walking on her knee and all that. So we gave her one. And put a smile on her face. That is some of the family members with me and the girl. Yeah, and that is the van that uh, we use to carry on to our work. You can see the inscription on it, Baptist Missionary Association of Africa. And this is me. <laughs> yeah, and we give used clothes to people, and you can tell how happy that man is. He, 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 we, what we do is when we take the used clothes from here, you know, we, we put it in the container here when there's the container being sent to Africa, we, we collect used clothes. And when we put it in the, in the church, what we do is uh, you come and pick, whatever you pick is yours. You can pick a lady's clothes, and it's, <laughs> a man can pick a lady's clothes. And if you don't like it, then you swap with somebody, you know. So we, because we cannot give it one, one, and, you know, it won't be fair. So we just let them pick. So she picked, he picks a woman's clothes, and she was just laughing the whole time. <laughs> yeah. And this is the truck we use. We haul people anywhere we go to do the lost work. And this is the, where we pack our bicycles when we buy them in bunch, we just store them. And there's one of the um, church buildings that I helped to put concrete on the floor. It was uh, dusty and uh, things. So. And that is some of the bicycles, $85 a piece. Yeah, and gave it to this man who had just finished church planting ministry and they are going out. And this is the team that I work with. So, and that is the building over there is our offices and Bible school or Bible Institute and other things. That's where I work every day, teach and all that. Yeah. And these are some of the men that we work with too. I don't know if you will see that little box, the black little box over there. It's a proclaimer, you know, it is, like a, a recorded Bible, you know. So we put it in the middle, anywhere we go, and people will come and sit around it and hear the gospel. This is my church. This is where I belong. This is where I go to church. The school, school kids, they are weeding the compound. <laughs> we use, you know, the city.
And you see the cross is also one of the recorded Bible uh, readings and all that. The Bible, the whole Bible is on that thing, so we give to these people so they can hear it. And it's, it is in our language. We have transferred all you know, the English into our language, and people are able to hear the gospel through this medium. This is a cocoa farm, cocoa, where we got chocolate. This is how it is, cocoa. This is the village where the cocoa farm is. And that is one of our highways, okay? <laughs> and this is some uh, how the villages looks like, where we live. And it's one of our central church. We hold a meeting. Uh, kind of a conference there every year. So I guess we are done. This is my two girls uh, kind of giving you a little tips of Africa and how we do our things over there. And like uh, Gary was telling you, we, by God's grace, we the, the Lord has opened new doors for us to reach into two other countries. Congo, I don't know if you all heard about Congo, uh, where they've been fighting a lot, but the Lord has led us to go to Congo, and now we have a mission post in Congo. And then another one in Niger. Niger is sitting on top of Burkina Faso, uh, going to North Africa, which is 99% of Muslims. But the Lord has opened the door for us to establish a ministry over there, which is doing very well. And uh, it's all because of your help and support that moves us to go to places like that because uh, it costs a lot to move to places like that. We buy gas for $6, and I saw <laughs> I saw 309 and I'm like, wow, this is cheap, you know, but we, we buy it for $6 a gallon. Like, wow. So it costs a lot for us to move to different directions as the Lord opens the door. But uh, I'm really grateful to this church and uh, the leadership with Gary and uh, the love you have for the Lord and to help so others can hear the gospel as well. God bless you. Just want to read to you a statistics about uh, what we've been doing. Professional faith for the year, we have 12,123. 12,123 professional faith. And then professional faith for church planters. We have church planters also as a department. They also came out with 11,876. So total, total for both are 23,999. And then when it comes to new convert attending baptism classes for the year, we have 5,393, 393, 5,393. What we do is we put people who want to be baptized. Over the hours is different. You go to class for three months before we give you questions and all that. We want to make sure you understand what it means to be baptized. So you have three months to go to class. And when we are convinced, then we baptize you. That's how we do it. So, 5,393. And then we new contacts by church planters. We contact people throughout the year. And we contacted uh, 39,706 people. And then back, baptism for the year is 286. Yeah, so that is what the Lord has led us to do. And uh, I thank you all for your prayers and your support. I know not everybody can go, but your support moves someone to go as well. And that's all about mission. And I am so thankful for this church, for your heart for mission. I'm not going to take much of your time because I know there are some goodies out there waiting. And I know Thanksgiving is a big thing in America. And I'm so proud of that. 
I came in the right time. So I can put some weight on me again, you know. Thank you so much. Uh, today, I want to share with you from the Bible. We'll be reading from Psalm 46. We'll read from 1 to 11. Psalm 46. But, you know, something that I did not say is uh, when we are through or at the end of the service today and you have any questions, you can come to me and then I'll be glad to answer you anything you want to know. And our home, Africa, is open. I want people like you to come and see for yourself. When we come and tell, it's like story, you know, but... If you happen to be on the ground and see what God is doing in other ways, then you know, you know, it's a blessing. Okay. So when we are through and you have any questions, you can just ask me and I'll be glad to answer with you. It is 5 to 11 or so. So let's see. I'll make it short, okay? All right, if you wouldn't mind standing up with me to read the gospel of the Lord. Psalm 46, verse 1, it reads, God is our refuge and strength, a very pleasant help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the mix of the sea, though the waters thereof roll and be troubled, Though the mountains shake with a swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early, the hidden red, the kingdom were moved. He altered his voice, and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts, is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolation he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow. He cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the shallows in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the hidden. I will be exalted in the earth, the Lord of hosts with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. 10, it says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the hidden. I will be exalted in the earth. Shall we pray? Our merciful Savior, we thank you this morning, God, for who you are. We are so grateful, Lord for giving us life again to live today, that we can gather like this to worship you. We really appreciate all that you've done in our lives, making us to see another Thanksgiving. Not everybody got this opportunity, but Lord, you have allowed us to see it again. We really appreciate that, and we say thank you to you, God. I pray that you move me today as I stand in front of your people, that God, you will speak through me, and you let what you want your people to hear comes out. And may we be doers of your word. I ask this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I have title or my topic for this morning is knowing God. Knowing God. You know, many a times we think we know God. And that is it. But knowing God goes further more than what we think. Getting closer to God is what God is expecting from us. Trying to meditate like God. Seeing the ways of God. Moving in the directions of God. Is what God is expecting from Christians like us. 
We can't just call ourselves Christians alone and not knowing the ways of God. You ask many people, are you a Christian? Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. I go to Copper Spring Baptist Church, you know. And then you, when you go further to ask some questions, he might, you know, fumble or something. You know, people get scared of even sharing the gospel. I'm shy. You know, I wouldn't know what to say and all that. But Jesus wants us to know him more so we can carry his words out there. He said, be still and know that I am God. If you believe and move out there to share the gospel, to make others to know God, God is going to be there with you. No matter how you are, no matter how you can speak, he will put words in your mouth. Just try it and see. We should take fear out of us. We should take fear and shine us out. If we want to know God, our God is not a fearful God, okay? He's not shy. He moves in the direction that he thinks it is good. So we can meditate and do what God is doing. The proclamation, he said, be still. Be still during the rush of life. You know, I have sensed that American economy and all living, you know, is, is getting shaky and all that. I read it on the internet. I listen to it on the news and all that. But Christians, God is God. No matter what the world will do, he will take care of his people. And that is the God we serve. If we get to know him well, we will understand his ways. He said, be still during the prosperity of life. When things get so good, don't turn your back to God. Make it to him. Let him know that he has offered you all that you have. It is him. Because he knows you and because you know him, he has provided whatever you have. So in the time of prosperity, we still give love, we still give thanks to God. Amen? And that is what God is expecting us to do. He said, be still during the seasons of life. Time changes. Good times, bad times, weather and all that, you know, we see things changing. But God said we need to be still. Even when it comes to that time. We ought to be still and know that he is God. If we know God, we will understand his ways. Be still during the troubles of life. Trouble comes in our life daily. And then we will think we can solve it. But I tell you, it is only God who can solve a Christian's trouble. Because if we take it upon ourselves to follow him, he is so merciful to take all our troubles and make it a lovely one in our lives. Amen? So God is ordering us to be still. Be still during the crisis of life. There are several things that happens. Work, move here, go there, like, you know, crisis going on with my son and all that. You know, but God said, be still. And that's where I'm standing right now. I'm saying, God, if you want this to happen, I leave it all to you. I am still. No matter what happens, we ought to be still. We need to depend on God. Be still during the fearful times of life. I know things get shaky some of the times, and then your family crisis here and there. You know, you hear this, and I mean, a whole lot of things going on in your mind, and the family is crumbling and all that. But God is saying we need to be still. That is the only word. Be still. We cannot run from it. We cannot hide from it. Just be still. Because God is in control. Now, the purpose of this is, and know that I am God. If we know the one we are serving is God, then Christians, we will never be scared of anything. Come what may, we can stand and be still for him. God is going to rescue us from anything that happens to us. We must accept the reality of God. He is God. 
We cannot change anything. He is God. That's the only name. He is God. We need to be put our trust in him. We need to depend on him. We need to do all that we can to know the purpose of God. We must understand the will of God. Most of the time, we want our will to be done. We forget that it is God whose will has to be done. And then we will be moving here and then, you know, thinking, you know, I want this to happen. Forgetting that God hasn't accepted that. Unless you ask him and give it to him and let him know that, God, I put all for you. Let your will be done in my life. And if you want your will to be done, God will just stand aside and look at you and let you do it and see if you will make it. God is God. We must live in the light of God. How do we live in light? So many ways of living in light of God. We have to be transparent. We need to let people see us that we are Christians. Not us to let people know that we are Christians. Let people know, I mean, to see you, that you are sister, so so and so. When I see her, I see Christ in her. Brother, so so and so, if I see him, I see Christ in him. We should let our light shine before men for them to realize who we are. Knowing God, we ought to surrender everything to him. Now the picture, God is our refuge. And strength and ever pleasant help in trouble. Anything that happens, God is right there. If you know God and if you trust Him with all your heart, with all yourself, anything that comes to you in trouble time, He's right there with you. He will see you through to go through and come out with success. That is the God we serve. That is the one that we ought to depend and know him and get closer to him. We just don't have to call ourselves Christian and not know the detailing of what we need to do. God is our refuge. Look at Israel. When Israel was in, you know, in, in Egypt and they were in, you know, all this struggling and all that. God said, I'll move my people. And he did. He chose Moses to rescue his people. He came out. Israel became free. God took care of his people. And that's the God we serve. God is our strength. We have no strength without God. We get up in the morning and we think we are standing and walking and going and doing our normal business things and we don't give thanks to God. Brothers and sisters, I know sometimes we all do. We forget who God is, who made us who we are, the strength that we have, that we can do, go work and do all things. Our God is God and he is the one that we need to depend Give him the glory. God, thank you for the strength that I have today. For the work I have today. For the children I have today. For everything that, Lord, you are giving to me, all is yours. We need to know God and be close to God. God is our ever pleasant. God is our ever pleasant help in trouble. Now let's see the peace. Therefore, we will not fear. No matter what America or the world look at America, or even they want to take America, even they want to do anything, our God is going to take care of his people. We will have peace and see peace that we will never fear anything if we are depending on God, if we are knowing God, if you want to know God really close, nothing is going to take you off. 
No fear. Nothing. He is the God that we serve. We will not fear because of who God is. We have seen several things that God has done. We, you know, reading the Bible, knowing the Bible, studying the Bible, the stories that have come through history, proves that God is God. He rescues his people. He takes, he takes care of his people. He makes sure his people are taken care of. We will not fear because of what God is able to do. He has done some before. And he keeps on doing it. And he will ever continue to do it. Our God is not going to let us down. We will not fear because God is with us. He says, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. God is always going to be with his people. Even if it comes down to three, four, five, whatever, God is going to be with us. We need to be still, Christian people, and focus on God. When you turn your eyes up, you get sick. But when you focus on Christ, you're going straight to Him. There's nothing that will pull us down. Let's strive hard. Let's put extra effort to do what we can for God. I know it is different where I'm from and where you are. But at least I've lived in America for at least four or five years. And I've experienced some things here that people are not open. You know, like you go to their homes, knock, want to share the gospel. Oh, no, 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 no. Because I've been there. I've seen that before. I've went to places like that, you know. You know. But Christians, we still have means that we can do it. There are people that have come around here, living here and all that, that they don't know God or they don't have a church to go. We can visit them, no matter what. They, they might say go, but God will say you have done what I asked you to do. Because the whole thing that God said is go. That is the command. He didn't say anything else. He said go. So you just go and you do what God has asked you to do, and that is enough. He knew you've done it. So let's do our best and do what we can to rescue the lost souls. Amen. Thank you. And I appreciate your time. And like I said, I wasn't going to take all your time. And uh, I'm glad you, you gave me your audience. And I appreciate that. And I pray that God will help us to know him more and bring us close to him. Amen. God bless you.